Pseudomonas aeruginosa is the topic. There are many types of pseudomonas, but in this video we're going to concentrate on the aeruginosa type. And pseudomonas favors moist environments. And really the biggest take home message about pseudomonas is that it's acquired in the hospital. These hospital acquired infections are sometimes referred to as nosocomial infections. Nosocomial is the word for hospital in the Greek language. In the hospital, this organism is frequently present in sinks and urine receptacles. And commonly within the hospital, infections most likely will occur in the ICU or in the burn units. Keep that in mind with regard to where in the hospital these infections most likely can occur. A few risk factors I wanted to mention. Pseudomonas infections can occur more commonly in patients that are immunocompromised, such as HIV patients. And in terms of the diseases that Pseudomonas causes, this is actually a very highly tested aspect of Pseudomonas. So Burn patients can have infections with pseudomonas. In particular, what we're talking about is wound infections. And these wound infections can unfortunately progress to bacteremia, and if severe enough, septicemia. So that's the first one. The second medical condition caused by pseudomonas can be an ear infection known as external otitis. And this ear infection happens commonly in swimmers. And I'll mention one more high yield infection because there's a long list of them, and that is pneumonia. And in particular, pneumonia in two populations. The first is patients with cystic fibrosis. That's an important one. And the other one are patients that were on a ventilator ventilator-associated pneumonia. So keep those ones in mind. Those are some of the most highest yield diseases, medical conditions associated with pseudomonas. Physical exam, of course, will depend on the symptoms, but there's a couple things I wanted to point out that tend to show up on licensing exams. The first is any mention of greenish sputum or greenish discharge from the ear. And the second one is wounds that have a particular odor and that odor is described as a sweet fruity smell and of course the physical exam will involve any other relevant finding related to the symptomatology diagnosis rests heavily on the cultures culture of the blood culture of the urine culture of the skin lesions anything that you feel will allow you to isolate the pseudomonas organism. And in terms of treatment, various antibiotics are used to treat pseudomonas. I'll just give a couple examples. For example, when you have a patient with bacteremia, since this is a systemic infection, you will treat with IV antibiotics. And the one that is commonly used is a ceftazidime. And then, for example, if you have infections such as external otitis, then you can use an oral medication such as a fluoroquinolone called ciprofloxacin. And there's many others, but these are a couple that I wanted to mention. So now let's look at a few clinical vignettes. 14-year-old girl with cystic fibrosis is admitted to the hospital with fever and shortness of breath and is diagnosed with pneumonia. During a respiratory therapy session, she coughs up mucus that is distinctly greenish in color. Which of the following organisms should be suspected? It's a short vignette, but there's enough clues with regard to the cystic fibrosis and the green sputum to point to pseudomonas. A truck driver was involved in a serious accident and received second and third degree burns over his body. He was placed in the burn unit and 
on his 12th day of admission, developed a wound infection with a bluish-green exudate. Treatment with chloramphenicol and tetracycline was unsuccessful. A gram-negative motile organism was isolated that was oxidase positive, did not ferment lactose, sucrose, or glucose, but grew on McConkie's agar and produced a fruity aroma on that medium. Which of the following organisms was most likely isolated? So they gave you a lot of microbiology there, and they also told you about the exudate color and the fact that he's in the burn unit strongly points to Pseudomonas. A six-year-old presents to his pediatrician with left ear pain. His parents state that he had been in his usual state of good health until he went swimming in a lake a few days ago. The patient's vital signs are within normal limits for age. He is afebrile and appears non-toxic. Physical exam of the left ear reveals edema and erythema of the ear canal as well as a greenish odorrhea. It is difficult to visualize the tympanic membrane. Pain is increased by manipulation of the pinna and pressure on the tragus. Which of the following is the most likely pathogen producing this patient's symptoms? Otitis externa in a swimmer with greenish odorrhea, most commonly caused by Pseudomonas. 35-year-old fireman was badly burned when the roof of a house collapsed on him. He had second-degree burns involving 15% of his body surface and third-degree burns involving 20% of his body surface. He was rushed to the nearest emergency department and then transferred to a burn unit. A week later, he develops fever and black patches are noted in the burn wounds. Biopsy and culture of one of the wound sites would most likely reveal which of the following organisms. And this is obviously a very severe case of a patient in a burn unit that then develops a wound infection and that most strongly points to Pseudomonas.